Hi, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about be intentional in love. So <laughs> I know you're probably thinking, like, why is it every week you're talking about love? It's because I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's because God has when you're thinking of God, you're thinking of love because God is love. And so every time I go to church on Sunday, it's always a message about love because God is love. And it could be a message about, you know, something else. There could be other parables. There could be other metaphors. There could be other analogies used. But all in all, God is love and God is everything. And so for me, <laughs> whenever I'm doing these videos, I'm like, oh, my goodness, they're probably like, here's love again. But I love love. Let's not pretend. I'm not going to say just because I used to be a cynic that I don't believe in love. I think that once you find God, you know love. Like when you can see the grace and the mercy that he has for you in your life, when you can see how forgiving he is, when you can see that no matter what mistake you make, he still loves you. That's real love. Like, I don't care what anyone says. That is really love, love. Like, I can't imagine being able to describe love any better than God. And I shouldn't be able to because he is love. And so today at church, I did, I'm not going to say that because I don't want to do like a humble brag or anything like that. I'm just going to say today at church. Okay. So today at church is <laughs> funny because last night I was feeling a little, I'm going to share this because I think that it'll give you an idea of my mindset and it'll let you know like how I made it through it. And on this video, I may have to like do some pauses or breaks or whatever else because I have like a nasal, not decongestion, but like a drip. So it's some of the things that I'm saying are going to sound like really like, like as if I'm like talking through my nose, like people sing through their nose, like that's how it's going to sound. And so I don't want you to think that <laughs> I'm just being weird or anything. It really is just because. Last night, I was just feeling like a little off, and it's just one of those things. So you'll hear me like swallow a lot, or you'll see me like pause the video a lot because I don't want to just be like gump, 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 gump throughout the whole video. And so, and so, let me go ahead and get started. So today, I went to church and the pastor talked about being intentional in love well he said to be intentional but I added in love because all three of the points that he made this had love in it so I was like hmm okay being intentional in love and so I know I have a video about being intentional in life and I really do feel like intentionality is one of those things that we all have to have as Christians and that's also what the pastor said today I really truly believe that as Christians, we have to be intentional because we can't just keep walking through life and then not knowing what direction we want to go or how, like, for me, God is telling me to serve in the season. And so I don't know what area I would serve in, but I also want to make sure I'm intentional about showing what, ser what being of service looks like, what being helpful in a different area looks like. And one pastor that I listened to in a sermon last week said it the best, like he didn't know how people could say they know God and not serve. And I think that's so true because a lot of people like for selfish reasons, maybe thinking like, I, 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 or I want, or give me this, give me that. But lately I've really been thinking about how selfish I can be in certain areas. And I really truly want to be the type of person who is selfless. Um, I know that there are going to be things that I want, like I know there's going to be things that, that I desire for my life, but I also know that I can't just only think about what's beneficial for me if it's not mutually beneficial for someone else. I also have to think about how I make someone else feels instead of just how I feel. Like, it's weird because once you get your voice, you're like, I'm telling everybody <laughs> how I feel and not everybody can handle that. And then there's a way to go about it. You don't just have to be reading everybody right to left. You don't have to come off <laughs> as abrasive or anything like that. Like, there's a way to go about saying things when you are really being 
intentional when you're really coming from a loving place. And for me, I want to make sure that when I say things like I'm I'm so honest, it's ridiculous. Like and I don't mean honest, like as if I never have ever lied in my life or something like that, because every person has lied at one point or another intentionally or unintentionally. And most of my lies have been unintentional in the past because I was like, I really meant to do that, but I just didn't get around to it or something like that. And so, (laughs) so I would just be like, "Mm -mm -mm." (laughs) I would just be like, if someone asked me a question, I would directly answer it. Like they would say, hey, do you like me? And I'd be like, no, I wouldn't. I didn't think that I was saying it in a mean way. And I mean, they asked the question, but I also don't want to come off as like if someone if I asked someone if they liked me and they said no, I wouldn't want I would feel some type of way if they were like, no, like and they kept it on moving out. I mean, hopefully I wouldn't do that because I would know that someone was interested I have done that in the past because sometimes you just can't tell like you think someone does, but you don't really know if they do. And I'm getting all off course, but that's how I do in these videos sometimes. And so, (laughs) so I will just be like, oh my goodness, like I'll just be straight up like that. And if I'm feeling a certain type of way about something, I will say it. I don't say it. I try to be nice about it and I try to say it in a good way because I try to think of if someone was saying this to me how would I want to hear it I try not to just abruptly say something that's going to rub someone the wrong way I try to be (laughs) I try to do it the right way sometimes it doesn't always come out that way like sometimes people will have the audacity to say things and I'll be like like (laughs) I don't say this but the the things that I say sound kind of like this tone like they'll say something and they'll just like assume something and I'll be like no like what why would you even think that but I don't say why would you even think that but the tone that I take sounds like that and I'm like oh my goodness I didn't mean it like to say it in that way in that tone I really meant to say you know no but you know not not no (laughs) I really just meant to say no you know or, you know, something else. And a lot of people in my life will say, you know, you could always just joke about it and then just say, why would you think that? Or something else. You don't have to be like, no, I never said that. <laughs> like, I do that sometimes. And I'm trying to get better at it because not everybody understands my personality. And some people may think that I'm just being rude or disrespectful when I say things like that, when I just want to be 100% honest. I don't want to like, make it seem like something that's not I don't want to come off any other kind of way I want to make sure I'm being upfront and honest and like even when people like ask me out and stuff like that like when I wasn't ready I really said I'm just not ready because I wasn't and it wasn't anything to do with the person or the people like nothing was wrong with them or anything else it was just I wasn't ready and I didn't want to be that person who rushed to date people or rushed to get to know people or rushed into anything when I knew I wasn't ready. I didn't want to be in that situation or put someone through all of that knowing that I wasn't ready. And so <laughs> I I really do try to be like completely 100% upfront, front, especially if if it's something that I need and someone can't give me that, like I know they're, they're absolutely not able to do something like that, then I'll just say, no, it's not gonna work out. And it could work out. It could just be a thing that takes work. And that's something that I need to work on because I was talking to, I know everybody's going to be like, you talk about your therapist sometimes in these videos, because I think it's important to have Jesus and a therapist. Like, I don't think that you like as a Christian, I really, truly believe in therapy. I do. And I say that because sometimes it's good to have an unbiased opinion of, of someone else who could see things from like just a midway perspective not just leaning on your side or the other side of course they want you to have the benefit of the doubt they want you to do better they want you to grow and learn and everything else but they also have they have a a perception about everything their perspective on things allows you to think of it in a different way it allows you to be able to see things from someone else's perspectives without without your emotion being in the middle of it 
Like, yes, you still have emotions, but it doesn't mean that that will be the thing that guides you. It'll be more of a logical standpoint on wherever it is that you're you're being led. And so (laughs) it's funny because (laughs) my when I was talking to my therapist, because I just talk about everything, I just I know sometimes like if I miss like a week, two weeks, something like that, when I talk the next time, it's like a whole hour and I'm like. Hmm, I do talk a lot sometimes, <laughs> but I'll just talk about like all the stuff that's going on or whatever else. And I said one thing and I was just like, and now it's just too late. And then <laughs> she was just, I feel like it's okay to divulge this because it's me and I'm sharing my story, not because, you know, and no one knows who it is or anything like that. So we're fine. But, but I'll say now it's just too late. And then she'll say, well, you know, not everyone communicates that way. Or sometimes people do like to take their time in this area. Or sometimes, you know, you really have to be patient with certain people. And it's true. You can't just rush through life. Like when I was younger, I always wanted to rush through everything. I wanted to rush into a relationship. I wanted to rush to to do everything. Like I just felt like I couldn't just slow down or let life guide me. I had to be in control of everything that was going on in my life. And it really led me down this really horrible path because I started to do all of the wrong things and it started to, it started to change the trajectory of my life and make me, it it put me through a lot of things that I really didn't have to go through. I really just put myself in those situations. And so now that I'm older, I really do try to practice patience. Like even when I get to know people or whatever else, I try not to just jump into into something or jump into a scenario or jump into some sort of conversation. Like even me, like feeling comfortable enough, like expressing some of the things that I've been through in the past, I I don't just divulge all that information to everyone. I try to get to know someone first. And then if I feel comfortable enough, I will share some things about myself with them. But I don't, I don't ever want to be like, (laughs) I've had like people in the past that would force me to say things about stuff that I didn't feel comfortable talking about, or they would feel like I need to hurry up and do stuff like, oh my goodness, how long does this lady think I'm going to wait, you know, for this conversation or this thing or whatever else. And, and I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about anything in general. And it's just (laughs) the right people will wait. They're not just trying to just force you to just divulge everything, to just do everything that they want you to do. Like, of course, people have their own things that they want. They, you know, everyone's a little selfish. I don't think that any one person is completely selfless. I also think that a really good person is willing to be patient with you and willing to to know that everyone is going to be ready or do things within their own time. Like, discussing like personal information or whatever else it's not just something that everyone just discusses openly like that which I really appreciate with certain people because there there were times where people would make me feel like I had to divulge that type of information or it wasn't I couldn't just wait until I was ready to say things or whatever else and so I really respect people like that and it's just awesome. Okay. And so <laughs> let me get back on course because I always end up just talking and talking and then I never tell the thing, but I, I feel like it's, <laughs> it's valid and it could be useful because maybe there are some other people who rush through life. And now that you're older or maybe before you rush through life, you can learn not to have to rush, just to enjoy the moments that you have at this time instead of feeling like you have to hurry up and do everything everyone else is doing. You have to hurry up and and divulge all this information or share things that you're not comfortable sharing or be something someone else wants you to be instead of you seeking value within yourself. And so mm, it is so uncomfortable, (laughs) but I feel fine. It just feels awkward. I wouldn't say it is, mm, it's a little uncomfortable and awkward, but it's not like horrible. Okay, so the pastor talked about being intentional in love. He gave three points. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to say fast, but then as soon as I like the spirit flows, if the spirit flows 
and I feel like there's something else I need to say on each thing, then I will say it. But other than that, I'm just going to go through, go straight through and not try to just make this into a longer video than it has to be if it doesn't have to be long. So I'm going to try to do everything that I need to do. So the first thing about being intentional in love is loving your people. This is just notes from the pastor. This isn't my thing, but I also might add like little notes, side notes or whatever that I thought my personal opinion or whatever. He elaborate on some of the things that he said, because you know, of course I felt it. And it was, I would say eye opening and also like, a, I don't want to say reassuring, but it was like one of those things that I get to, it's like a reiteration of the things that I've known, but it's also good to hear it again, to remind yourself of why these things are so important in your life. So that's how I kind of felt about this sermon. And it also made me like, just listen, not just to think of what I think or just think of, oh, well, this doesn't apply to me. Like on certain parts, I just, and then as soon as I thought that the pastor was like, this is for you too, people who aren't. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, that makes sense because it's really important to obtain knowledge in every area, even if you're not there yet, even if it's a different area of your life or you were there or whatever else. Sometimes the mistakes that you've made in the past can help you become better in the future. And I truly believe that. Okay. And so he says, love your people, brotherly love, hospitality. Everyone that you come in contact with is considered your neighbor. And so, or brotherly love, or who you should have brotherly love towards. And when he said that, he said that sometimes you'll meet people or whatever else. Every time you meet someone, they should see the God in you. They should see that you are leading with love and kindness. They should see that you are a considerate person. Or he also said something like, what do you want them to think of you when you leave the room? Like when you leave them, what is the impression that you want to make upon that person? And I really feel like that's really important for us to take the, take a moment and really think about and he was talking about, especially in the holiday season, when you, when it seems like you meet like some grumpy people or whatever else, and your first impression may be to do something rude or cruel or like to say something to them because they're always talking about standing up for yourself. And I truly believe in standing up for yourself. And I also understand what he's saying. And he was saying biblically, biblically that's what God would want is for you to handle the situation with love and kindness. And I truly believe that. I don't think that what he meant was allow every person to walk all over you. I think what he meant is lead with love and kindness. And sometimes like with me in the past, when there have been people who have been rude or cruel, or they've been like in a bad mood, when I'm nice, all of a sudden their mood changes and they become nice. They become a better person. And it's like the energy shifts and they just pull that happiness from me or whatever. It's like, the, it might be a person like, oh, and I'll be like, hey, how you doing? Like, I don't let, it doesn't matter what kind of facial expression whoever has. They could look mean. They could look like they smelled poop. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to still do this because I can't allow any person to make me feel like God hasn't already blessed me. I don't care if I got this nasal drip going on. I don't care if... <laughs> Um, I got a headache. Like if I have a headache, you might see me I be, might be like this, but I still got like a little smell because it hurts a little. But <laughs> but I really try to be intentional. I really try to make sure that people that I come in contact with really do see me at my best. Like one day I want to tell this story to be true and transparent because I don't want people to think that I'm just always smiling. Most of the time I am. Sometimes I'm in a mood, but I still like when I go other places, try to be in a happy mood because you don't know who you're going to influence or who's who's going to see you and feel like they want to do things that are more like that. Like sometimes it's so funny because in my family or like with people that I come in contact with, sometimes they'll say stuff and they'll be like, they'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, you're just like the sweetest person. You're always nice and smiling and this and that, or you're so helpful or whatever else. And I'll be like, oh, thank you. And it'll be some person who I see like once in a while and I just smile. I just try to be a good person about it. I don't, I'm not doing it because I wanted to impress them or anything like that, but you never know who's, who's watching 
who is paying attention to what you're doing. And I think that's why they say that you might be the only part, the only thing Christ like that they see, because it's true. And when you don't think somebody's looking at you or when you don't think that you're influencing somebody, you are. There are people who, after I wrote this book, was like, yes, you know, I had to support you because of this, this and this, because you carried yourself this way. If I would have been frowning or in a a nasty mood all the time, I don't think it would have been as successful. I don't think that it would have helped as many people because who would want to aspire to be loving and kind from someone who is in a nasty mood all the time? Like, I really think that even when you don't think people are watching, you still have to be the best that you could be. You still have to be God-like instead of bitter. You really do have to lead with love because you never know whose testimony you are going to influence. And so the next thing is love your person. (laughs) And on this one, he was talking about marriage, which I'm not married. So I was like, oh, this doesn't apply to me. And then he was like, even for people who aren't married, this applies to you because you don't have to be married to respect the principles of marriage that God put in the Bible. And I was like, so true. (laughs) It's so true, though, because it says respect God's ideals of marriage, being humble, honest, transparent and transparent with integrity. Stand on God's word more than your opinion. And that really made me think about it made me think about relationships in general and how sometimes it's easy to covet things in life to really look at what someone else has and want that instead of appreciating the things that you have instead of appreciating the person that you have is that person going to be perfect no but if you can remember why you like them why you respected them, why you decided to honor them, why you decided to say your vows with that person. And I'm not saying it as like a relationship person or anything like that. I'm just saying in general, because sometimes it's so easy to see like these reels or societal things like of what people are pretending as if is okay. Or you see people like pretend as if their life is perfect, or you'll see pictures on social media and it'll look like the perfect happy couple, or you'll see like a snippet of someone saying they're in the perfect relationship and it'll make you think that my relationship isn't anything like this when really you should be appreciating the person that you're with because God put you with that person because he knew what you needed. He didn't want you to just get what you want because that other person might've had to go through several years of sleepless nights that other person might have had to go through you know the person always being too busy for them that other person could have always had to go through like them being talked down on because a person makes more money or something like you don't know what happened and you don't know what their situation is like you're not behind closed doors no matter how it looks like in front of everybody else they could put on a good show they could be real good actors but in real life what really matters is what you appreciate in your life what God is giving you and you actually being a good steward of it you actually appreciating the things that God is giving you in life and and acknowledging that it might not be perfect but it's everything that I need everything that God intended for me to have and it's not just going to be I sit back and kick my feet up and I get everything I want it really does take work and intentionality you really do have to be willing to put forth an effort you really do have to be willing to be patient and loving and kind you can't just be always constant and trying to hurry up and get something or being inconsiderate of someone else's feelings you or keeping records of wrongs and then thinking that you're going to be able to appreciate the person that you're with every time that you keep a checklist of how many times you've done something it's going to be negating all of the steps that the other person is taking to make an effort in your relationship and i mean that all the way around in friendships with family, whatever else, like you really do have to appreciate the things when people are actually trying, when people are actually putting forth an effort, when people are are doing the best that they can, they might not do what you want them to do, but when they're really doing the best that they can, appreciate it, appreciate them for who they are. They might not be the best communicator, but maybe they're trying. They might not be the type of person who just is always overly aggressive. 
but maybe their patience is what you need. You just really have to take a moment and appreciate all of the things that you have and not seeking what someone else has because God, especially if it's God ordained, what God wants for you is everything that you will need. It's not it's not just going to be your wants. It's not just because you want this person who has a six pack and your person has a beard, has a, a I was going to say beard belly. I don't know why I was going to say that, but your person has like a dad bod, which dad bods are so cool. I, I'm the only woman that's going to say that, but uh, no, I actually heard another woman say that before. And not that I'm lusting over it. I'm just saying in general. <laughs> and so, so yeah. And then the last thing is love his presence. Don't focus in the wrong place. And then, so the pastor went and he started talking about money and a piece of paper as it being a piece of paper and how we're really, we are the ones that put the value on the money. We're the ones who, you know, he's saying that really it's, it's nothing. It's literally just a piece of paper, but we are the ones who see it as valuable. And he talked about intrinsically and stuff like that. But it says the value of money is what we think of it that adds the value to it. And I know the pastor was talking about money, but as soon as he said it, you know, my over analytical brain and the things that I like to think of and stuff like that started clicking and it made, I, I took a little note. So I'm going to just read this. It might not make sense because sometimes when I'm writing, when I'm thinking of stuff and I'm like, it's going on and on and on. And I was running out of room all down the side of the page and stuff. And I was, I was writing and writing and I was just like, so it might make sense. It might not. I'm going to come back around and like, clean it up if I need to but this made me think of think about myself and how we view others by honoring ourselves and God we can decide to honor ourselves regardless of anyone else's opinion much like our relationship with God oh that did make sense and I wrote that while I was just I mean it was constantly churning I missed some stuff because I had forgot it as I was writing it down but it really did make me make me think about that like when we When we think of the value of other people, when we think of how much we value ourselves, sometimes we try to think, look for validation from other people. Like they're going to make me love myself. They're going to make me feel appreciated. They're going to make me feel like I am valued or worthy when God already created us worthy. We always like look to seek approval from other things at one point in our life, in our lives. And hopefully when you're older, you've reached the point where God is the only approval you need because people's opinions will change like they change their clothes, like the weather changes during the seasons. And so it's really important for us to be really intentional when we seek value in ourselves and others, because it's easy to overlook someone who's constantly there for you when you feel like they're always going to be there, but not everyone's always going to be here. So make sure that you appreciate the people in your life for who they are, the things that they do, that you you might just think, oh, this is something they do because they love to do it. You might just think, oh, this person is just there for me because they've always been there for me. Appreciate the fact that they've always been there for you and that they continue to be there for you. Show real appreciation to them because they don't have to do that. And when it comes to yourself, don't think about what you like how someone else views you or what their opinion is of you can you learn and and improve because of some of the opinions or the hopefully it's loving criticism but when you hear someone give loving a loving critique to you hopefully it's used to better you it's not used to to destroy or tear you down and you could take that in but when it comes to the value that God placed on you your life is more precious than rubies. It's, you are more important to him than the sparrow. You're more important to him than, than many things. And he knew you from before you were born. So you really have to make sure that you understand that regardless of what anyone else's opinion is, how they feel, how they don't feel, if they like you, if they don't, if they're there, if they're not, God is always a constant. And his value for you is the only thing that matters. So, (laughs) in conclusion, be intentional in love. (laughs) Love your people. 
the people who are who you come in contact with show them what god life is like like show them that god life like really be about that life leading in love and kindness love your person marriage it respect the the biblical idea of marriage understand and respect the fact that this is a covenant by god especially if it's god ordained and god discerned that this is your person appreciate and respect the fact that this is a marriage that if you are in the marriage you respect and appreciate your partner if you are not in a marriage but you see other people who are married that you are respecting their their covenant that you are respecting the fact that they are in covenant that you are really you are really you know the value of what marriage is so that when you do get married you will appreciate the person as much as you were intended to because you have already been doing preparation before it's time and love his presence don't focus on the wrong place and put your value in things that aren't important make sure you are putting your value in God that you are focused on what it is that God needs for you that you're focused on God's value for you and you're honoring yourself and you are honoring God because honestly that is the only thing that matters